we're going to be adding caching to one of our resolvers. The one we're going to do it for is the find listing one. So right now it's pretty simple. We're doing a single database call right here, and that's getting an array of listings back. We can see what this looks like in GraphQL Playground over here. And as you'd imagine, it's just a bunch of data and it's in an array. So to cache this, what we're going to do is we're going to be using Redis since we're already using that for sessions and we don't have to add anything. And we're going to be storing it or uh, filling the cache when the server starts up. And then uh, whenever the cache would get invalidated or stale, we're going to update the cache directly. All right, so we're going to start off in the start server over here. We're already passing an instance of Redis to our context, so we can access that in our resolver later. Um, but down here at the bottom, after we create a database connection, um, we're going to fill the cache. So to do this, I want to first clear the cache. So in case there's any stale data, so I'm going to say redis.delete. So we're going to store the cache in a single key. So I'm just going to clear that key. And right now I don't have a key for it, so I'm going to create one in the constant file. So I'm going to say uh, listing cache key, and I'm just going to call it listing cache. And then over here, I'm going to just say listing cache key is what we're going to delete. And then to fill the cache, we're going to first grab our data from the database. So I'm going to say listings is await listing.find. And now we can't just store directly into Redis. We need to uh, make these into strings. So I'm going to say const listing strings is equal to listings.map. And we're just going to stringify them. And now to uh, store an array in Redis, we're going to say redis.lpush. The key we're going to do is the listing cache key. And now for lpush, you'll notice it takes any number of parameters here you can pass in. So really what we want to do is store each listing in there. So we can do listing.string0 and then listing.strings1 and so on. But we don't really know how long listings is going to be. So a trick or a shortcut to that is we can do the dot 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 and it'll be equivalent to just doing what I was just typing out. All right, so I want to just lastly console.log that and make sure that we are storing the data correctly in Redis. So I'm going to say redis.lrange. Lrange is how you get arrays back in Redis or fetch arrays. And so the key is going to be the listing cache key. And then you provide a start and a stop. So we want the first element to the last element of the array. And to get the last element, we say negative 1 or all the way through the last element. So now I can see in my log here, here's the data that we're caching. So you can see I now have an array of strings. And each string is just some JSON data. So now I can use this. And I'm going to just copy this and put it into my resolver. And we don't need it this. So I'm just going to comment that out. All right, so I'm going to say const listings. We are now going to get from Redis here. And now I need to import the key that we're using. And then Redis, we are getting from the context. And so I can just return that now here. And now this also may be undefined, for example. So in case that ever happens, I'm just going to return an array back. And then lastly, we saw that though they are strings. So I need to parse those before I just return them there. So that just requires us mapping over. And we're going to say json.parse. And I guess we have a type of anything. And I'm going to say this is an, well, we, we know it's going to be a string. So I can even just put the type string there, I suppose. All right, so we'll let the server restart. Um, we need to remove listing from the top here. Uh, and then we can go call our find listings and see if we get the same result. And we see downtown condo, and we see all the same data that we're given back. So cool. So that is how we can cache it. Now the next problem we're going to solve is um, invalidation, or when this cache would get stale. So one place where this would happen is, for example, if we are going to add a new listing. Because we only fill the cache when we first start the server, 
it doesn't know about when we add listings. So now what I'm going to do is just update the cache. So after we save to the database here, I'm going to say Redis, and we can grab that from our context. We're gonna say L push and just add to our cache. So listing cache key, and I'm just going to stringify the listing. So now if I were to create an old condo, so right now old condo is not in our list of things, and I create that, if I come over here and I fetch again, you'll now see old condo is in our cache. So now we are always fetching from the Redis cache and then updating the cache when it would uh, get stale, for example, adding a new listing. So that's all I want to cover in this video. In the next one, I'm going to go over how to update the cache if we were to update a listing or delete a listing.